Howdy everybody, this is Omar, your audio amigo, here today with a sort of showcase video for you. Uh, this actually wound up being a much deeper rabbit hole and I've decided to turn it into a sort of half showcase, half investigation video. Uh, what prompted this whole thing is this cable. Uh, this is the Ruyi Rod from Yangtze. It is a $90 IEM upgrade cable featuring a Wukong inspired, you know, gold, red, black design. Um, and you know, it's got nice colors and matching hardware. It looks really, really pretty. Um, and what this video is essentially about is how this cable here is functioning as an impedance adapter like these. Um, and I decided to go ahead and do this video to show how impedance adapters like these have the potential to change the sound of your IEMs. So yeah. Real quick, wanted to give a shout out to my friend Wayne from Make It Wayne Reviews. Uh, he's on HeadFi and HiFi Guides, and he recently started a YouTube channel of his own to review IEMs. Uh, go check him out in the box up there. Uh, or, you know, it's also down in the description below. He sent me his 4.4 millimeter balanced version of the Ruji Rod to make sure that mine wasn't an outlier or a manufacturing error, and that at least amongst our two cables that they're consistent just to give a little bit more credence to the fact that this cable will act as an impedance adapter. So thank you very much, Wayne. Very much appreciate it. So the whole reason the Ruyi Rod cable here sparked this investigation is that when compared to the rest of my cables from Yangtze, uh, for example, this one, uh, all of these measured a resistance of around 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 ohms when I tested them with my meter here. Uh, my Ruyi rod, however, measured with a resistance around 15 and a half to, you know, 15.2 ohms. That's a pretty big difference. And it, again, led me down this sort of rabbit hole. This cable is essentially functioning as a 15 ohm impedance adapter, like you see included on some IEMs, like the Truth Ear Zero and the uh, Fat Freak Deuce, for example. Now, let me do a quick demonstration here. So let me power up my meter and put it into resistance mode. And we'll go ahead and grab the Yangtze Spidey cable, which I showed earlier. And I'm just going to test the left signal conductor. So left is this one. And if I check the resistance on it, we can see the resistance on it is 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ish ohms around there. Okay. So if I take this. 15 ohm impedance adapter that Fat Freak includes with the deuce, and I attach it to that cable. And I'll do the same thing. I'll measure the left signal conductor. And left is this one. And see what we get. You can see that we end up with, if I can get this to stick, and it was behaving earlier. There we go. 15.3, you know, 15.4 ish ohms. So basically it took the 0 0.3, 0 0.4 that the cable already had and it added 15 to it. Now let's take the Ruyi rod and do the same measurement. So let's again, let's do left signal conductor. And left is this one, the nice blue. Uh, polarity is correct on all of my cables, by the way, from Yangtze. And there you go, cable by itself, 15.3. So the Ruyi rod is acting the same as the Spidey if you add an impedance adapter. And if you take the Ruyi rod and you add a 15 ohm impedance adapter, take the left signal conductor again, and we end up with 30. 15 plus 15, 30. So, uh, yeah, the Ruyi rod, as I said already, is functioning as an impedance adapter cable. Now, what does that actually mean for you and your IEMs? Well, let's talk about it. So, what do impedance adapters and by extension the Ruyi rod cables do to your IEMs? Without getting too into the weeds electrically, uh, impedance adapters like these that I have here have the potential to do two basic things to your IEMs. Firstly, they'll make them harder to drive. If you add an impedance adapter to your IEM or if you're using the Ruyi rod cable, the first thing you'll notice is that the volume level drops by a decent amount if you had it set to something. Um, this will happen regardless of what IEM or headphone you're using. The effect will be lessened with you know headphones with really high impedances, but um, it makes sense if you're thinking about it because regardless of what the impedance or sensitivity of your given IEM is, 
what you're basically doing is you're adding a fixed amount of impedance on top of it. Um, the second thing that might happen if you use an impedance adapter is the impedance adapter could change the frequency or the tuning, the frequency response or the tuning of your IEM. I say might change because it's not guaranteed that it will happen. And the sort of effect that these impedance adapters have depends on a lot of factors. Uh, driver type, number of drivers, crossover design. You know, all of these things are factors in determining if an IEM will change with the addition of impedance adapter or the cable. Rather than make assumptions based on what I know electrically and you know I've, I've done crossover design, I know what, what I'm talking about, um, I decided to just make it easy and I took this fat frequency 15 ohm impedance adapter and I remeasured every IEM in my collection to see if the assumptions and inferences that I would have made with my knowledge hold up to actual experimentation. So this video has actually been quite a long time in the making, so allow me to present the data in the best way I can think of. I apologize if this is hard to follow. So let's start by talking about single driver IEMs, be that single dynamic, single balanced armature, or single planar. My data across all the IEMs that I have seems to line up with my assumptions. There's really no major massive changes to the frequency response or the tuning of a single driver IEM when you're using them with an impedance adapter or with these cables. Uh, all that really happens is that the IEM or headphone becomes harder to drive, and that makes sense. In most single driver IEMs, there's no passive circuitry or crossover between the signal input and the driver. I did notice a small change in the Awful Magic 1 here, because as we all know, the Awful Magic 1 has the passive filtering components in front of it that, you know, change the sound signal to make it more easy for the balanced armature to drive. So adding impedance would change the behavior of that circuitry. But other than that, uh, all the planars and single DDs I tried exhibited no real change in frequency response. So if you own a single driver IEM and you're looking to see if an impedance adapter will do anything to it, uh, I would say save your money, it's not really gonna do much. Where things get really interesting is with multi-driver IEMs. So multiple dynamics, hybrids, tribrids, quadbrids, and so on. Um, the drivers in a multi-driver IEM, uh, unless they're the same driver being used twice, will have different response curves for impedance. In addition to that, most multi-driver IEMs, not all, okay, have some sort of crossover that lets, you know, filters out frequencies and makes it so that certain drivers only play certain parts of the frequency range. Again, that's not always the case. Um, so what I did, again, measured every other IEM in my collection. Um, and what I learned was you can't really predict the results of an impedance adapter or these cables on an IEM just by saying, oh, well, it's a double DD, it's going to boost the bass, because that's not the case. Um, we'll start with the triple one Kailua here. I'm going to pull up the frequency response graph. Uh, and here's what happens when I add a 15 ohm impedance adapter. As you can see, there's a slight reduction in some areas of the treble. However, if we look at the Aoshida E20 instead, adding a 15 ohm impedance adapter, you see an increase in base energy at around 150 hertz and below. So both dual dynamic driver sets, the impedance adapter on the Kailua tucks the treble slightly, and on the E20, you get a really pronounced bass boost, kind of like the kind of thing you see on the uh, Truth Ear Zero Red or the regular Truth Ear Zero for that matter. Um, and then there's cases like the Tri Draco, where I'll pull up the graph, but adding an impedance adapter doesn't seem to do all that much. It could just be a measurement variation as far as I'm concerned. So for dual dynamic driver setups, a few different effects. Um, I'll talk a bit more about them later. Things get even more complex as we move into IEMs with sort of three or more drivers. We'll start by looking at the Dunu Da Vinci here. Pull up the graph. Um, yeah, you can see adding a 15 ohm impedance adapter makes the Da Vinci more V-shaped. It adds energy in the upper mids and in the base, and it sort of tucks down the mids a little more, and it reduces the upper treble. Uh, that seems to be a popular thing to happen on multi-driver sets. Uh, I observed a similar effect on most of the Zigat sets. I'm going to use the Dos Cinco here as an example, pull it up. As you can see, more bass, more lower treble, reduction in the mids, and in the upper treble. The Performer 7, however, uh, straight up just gets warmer. Uh, as you can see on the graph, it's just 
a warmer looking performer seven. However, on the hexa, the hexa actually gets brighter. You can see on the graph, it loses some low end and it gains a little bit of sparkle. I did also find two sort of extreme cases of the sound signature changing. Uh, this is the frequency response for the Canera Celeste Relentless. As you can see, stock sound, you got a nice bass hump and a nice treble shelf. However, watch what happens when I add in a 15 ohm impedance adapter. Suddenly, that treble shelf is falling off sharply and the bass gets a pretty massive boost, turning it from an airy V-shaped set into straight up a bass head set. Speaking of bass head, one of the more popular sets of 2024 and one of my recent award winners is the Simgot Supermix 4. Uh, it has a Harman-like, you know, crowd-pleasing tuning. Uh, yeah, I will say, if you're watching this video right now and you have a Supermix 4, check out the graph. Throw an impedance adapter on it. Completely changes the character of the IEM. Now, you're only a cable swap or an impedance adapter away from a full-on bass head experience. Uh, honestly, like I said earlier, the results for both dual dynamic and multi-driver, you know, hybrids, tribrids, quadbrids are all over the place. The effects vary from like a very slight treble boost or a slight bass tuck uh, all the way to something like the Relentless or Supermix where it's a sort of two-faced Harvey Dent Superman thing. The personality and character of the IEM changes completely with just a cable or an adapter. As a reviewer, that sort of wild swing in performance is not something that I can exactly ignore. So there's going to be a few minor changes to my reviews going forward. Okay, so what changes am I talking about? First of all, I am making all of the data that I collected, all of the measurements, uh, for all of my multi-driver IEMs as well as a handful of my single driver ones available on my squig link for y'all to browse freely. Do you have a multi-driver IEM that I have tested? Are you curious about what a 15 ohm-ish impedance adapter would do to it? Well, head over to my squig link, you can browse the graphs and you can see what happens if you want to give the impedance adapter a try. One thing I will say is this was a lot of measurements and I wasn't as vigilant with those measurements as I usually am. And what I mean by that is not all of the impedance adapter measurements are lined up so that the resonance peak is at eight kilohertz like I usually strive to do. If the IEM you're looking at isn't lined up at eight kilohertz, don't look at where the peaks at and above eight kilohertz are. Look at how intense they are instead. That'll give you an idea. Uh, secondly, from now on, every review, I will be measuring the IEMs both with and without an impedance adapter just to see what response they exhibit. It will be a new part of my reviews. I'll either add it sort of at the end, right before I do the comparisons when I'm talking about the tuning, uh, or I'll bring it up in the stats page if I think that a high output impedance source would cause a drastic change to the frequency response of an IEM. This way you can be aware of sets like the Relentless and the Supermix that can completely change character with an impedance adapter, or like I said, using a source with a higher than usual output impedance. So those are the changes to my reviews going forward. All of that honestly needs leads me back to the Rudy Rod cable here. Uh, yeah, the build on this is quite nice. The 3.5 millimeter connector is a really nice sort of engraved metal. The uh, y split is that same design. The IEM connectors are it's it's just a really beautiful looking cable. It feels nice in the hands. The wires are a bit thin, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it makes for a good like on the go cable. The cable, as you can see, behaves well. Um, there's no chin slider, not a huge deal. It's not microphonic at all. And I really dig the color. I think it works well with lots of different IEMs. Uh, I do not think it's worth the asking price of $90. I got mine for 45 on sale and it can typically be found between that and like 55 ish bucks. Uh, that, you know, being said, this is the only cable in my collection where I can easily say that it will make your IEMs sound different at the very minimum. It will make them quieter, which if you're listening on a noisier source, like an older iPod or some older cassette players, it will help with the uh, background hiss from the electronics. But if you've got a multi-driver IEM that changes with an impedance adapter, this cable will affect the sound in the same way as this will. So for example, do you have the Fat Freak Deuce? Are you rocking it with the impedance adapter plugged in 24 seven? Get one of these and reduce the bulk of the cable a little bit. Same thing goes for the uh, Truthier Zero Red or the original Zero for that matter. Uh, yeah, if you're daily driving the impedance adapter, consider the Rui Rod. It's a cable upgrade that would make a lot of sense. 
if you're daily driving the impedance adapter, you don't like your stop cable, you're looking for a cable upgrade, this is a wonderful thing for you. Um, as I said before, my cable might be a manufacturing defect, but I took some steps to sort of check that. First thing I did was I asked people who had the Ruyi rod cable, does it get quieter? Do you have a multimeter? Can you measure it? Uh, that's where Wayne comes in. Wayne sent me his. I measured the resistance on it. It measures exactly like mine. After that happened, I said, okay, this might be intentional on the uh, intent of the manufacturer. So I reached out to my Angel Ears representative. Angel Ears sells Yangtze cables. It's an easier connection for them to make. I asked him if he knew if the higher resistance on the cable was an intended feature of the Ruyi rod or if it was a manufacturing defect. The response I got back was that the resistance I had measured was within spec for the manufacturer and that the increased impedance is intended. If that is the case, and with my limited sample size of two, it sure seems to be the case, then I can fully endorse this cable as an impedance adapter substitute. But that's going to wrap up this one. Uh, what was supposed to be a quick and easy showcase video on a rather gorgeous looking cable uh, turned out to be a uh, week-long measurement investigation extravaganza. Uh, but hey, at least I had fun testing everything, looking at the graphs, looking at the changes. Uh, if you own a Ruyi rod, uh, let me know in the comments if it changes the sound on your IEM. Let me know what IEM it changes the sound and what differences you hear. Uh, I would really like to collect more data on this one, so I appreciate that. Real quick, we'd like to give another big thank you and shout out to Wayne for sending me his. Really appreciate it. Again, go check out his channel. He's a great guy. Uh, but that's going to be it for now. I really appreciate all your continued support. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Omar with Audio Amigo Reviews, and I'll catch you all next time.